The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I'd like to start this morning with a poem that I found called The Hospitality of a Fire. It's written by a woman named Linda Palmer, and she uh, leads something called Welcome to Slow Down and Rest Saturday, which sounds lovely to me. I'd love to, to invest a little bit more in what she means by that. But here's the poem that she writes. <clears throat> There's just something about a warm, crackling fire. We write better poems. The warmth does inspire. One of God's greatest gifts is home where we live. The blessings of winter make us want to give. We cling to all warm things. When winter rolls round, there's nothing quite like a fireplace to be found. Gathering with our friends and family so dear round the warmth of the hearth fills us with such cheer. Share the warmth of your home with others this day. Invite them to step in and ask them to stay. And of course, we know that the warmth of a fire is wonderful, and the poem is named The Hospitality of a Fire. But I think really the true hospitality comes from the home itself, doesn't it? And hospitality isn't the home, it's the, it's the way that people make the home feel. When I was young, I remember people didn't used to use hotels as much as they do now. Um, when, when you would go visit someone, you would go and stay in their house instead of finding, or at least we did, we, we wouldn't stay in a hotel. That was kind of a really, really big deal if we stayed in a hotel. Um, so we would, when we had people come visit us, they would stay with us and we would share all of our accommodations and we'd be all together in this one home for a weekend or a week in this really wonderful sense of community with others. And my mom loved to entertain. She was truly the epitome of hospitality. She would invite people over all the time. She loved to have people at our house. And she would get, start getting ready a week or two or three in advance. She would search through recipes. She would look through new magazines and find new recipes. And she would even practice, she would settle upon the menu, and then she would practice on us for dinner what she was going to make for the dinner party, just in case it tasted bad, to make sure that it was going to be good for the guests. Most of the time it was great, though, because my mom was an excellent cook, just unbelievably excellent cook. She'd also have these themes. So if we had a dinner party in February, often the theme would be rodeo. 
or in April, it would be Fiesta, sometimes Easter, always 4th of July. And it would be even down to the little napkin rings, right? There would be, uh, I still have some of hers that she made out of thin rope, and then she tied them together with little mini bandanas for our rodeo party, and the, the placemats were bandanas, and the table was always set just perfectly. As soon as I was old enough to set the table, that was my job. And let me just tell you, the forks go on the left, the knife and the spoon go on the right, anything extra goes at the top because it's for dessert. And if you're having salad, the little fork goes on the outside, but if that one's for the dessert, the big one goes on the outside. And the glass always goes on the right side. Everything was always set just right. And the theme was always perfect. And then the other thing that was just unbelievably blow my mind was that she could always get everything out just at the same time. I never saw her notes. I'm pretty sure she had some where, you know, it was like at 5.30 you put the chicken in and at 6.12 you uh, get the rolls warmed and so on. But everything would come out all at the same time. And for those of you who cook, you know how difficult that is. She was a master at that. So no one was ever waiting around too long, and everything happened, and it was always warm. And our house was not only welcome to friends and family, but my family even welcomed in, my parents welcomed in strangers. Almost every holiday for a number of years that I can remember, my dad would get up early, and we lived on the northeast, far northeast side of town near I-35, and he would drive all the way across town to Lackland Air Force Base on the southwest side of town, to pick up a few people who were maybe celebrating the holidays without their family or friends and were alone. And they would bring them to our house and we would make new friends and they would be welcome in our home. And it didn't matter what their religious beliefs were or anything like that, they were always welcome. We got to know so many cool people. We still even keep in touch with one person that we met from Egypt. When I think of today's gospel, I think about what it must have been like to come to our house, except even bigger and better, because God's hospitality, wow, can you even imagine? Jesus says, in my Father's house there are many rooms, and I go there to prepare a place for you. We didn't have to, we wouldn't have to worry about the size of our home. There would always be plenty for everyone, plenty of food, plenty of space, plenty of love and welcome. And Jesus has gone there to prepare a place for us, each one of us. We are all invited. This passage has inspired a lot of popular Christianity songs over the last several years. One in the, in the 90s came out uh, by Audio Adrenaline. Thankfully, somebody finally got me the right group. I, for, I kept forgetting the group earlier, but Audio Adrenaline sang a song called Big House, and they talk about how in my father's house there are lots of rooms. Um, um, there's lo in my, uh, let's see. Now I just forgot it because I was so excited about knowing the name of the group. Um, <coughs> uh, lots and lots of rooms. Uh, there's a big, big table with lots and lots of food. There's a big, big yard where we can play football. What an image that there's something for everyone there. And then Rich Mullins came out with a song, and his chorus, well, his whole song really revolves around the entirety of the scripture. It's, in some places, it's even word for word. His chorus is this, that where I am, there you may also be, of where the truth, the truth will set you free. In a world that may have trouble, I give you my peace, that where I am, you may also be. I think Rich Mullins' song brings us into a second important point that this passage teaches us, not just about hospitality, but that Jesus will be there always for us and will once again bring us to himself and to God. This passage comes right before the Passover, right before the stories of him uh, being arrested and going to die. And so in this brief time, he's sharing with his disciples 
that although he will be leaving, he will come back. He's, to, he's going to prepare a place for them and for all people, and he will come back to bring us there and show us the way. If you move further in, the cha- in chapter 14, the next part goes even further to say that while Jesus is gone, he will send the advocate or the Holy Spirit, which we know comes shortly after at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is coming to be with us in this world. When I think about hospitality, I think about this. We need not worry. We have the Spirit with us now and Jesus with us to come. It's as if he were planning for the guests so that before the big party starts, before he can come and bring us to the big party, the Holy Spirit's here giving us the appetizers, making sure that we're taken care of at all times. Finally, often this passage is used at funerals because it's comforting. It's a comforting picture of what to expect next, one of the few pictures that Jesus paints for us about what heaven will be like. In this time of fear or anxiety or of not knowing, Jesus tells us that God's hospitality waits for us so that while we may have trouble in this life, God will give us final peace and welcome into God's home. Hospitality is a true gift. May we know the gift that Christ has given us, and may we also make every effort to show hospitality to everyone else. Amen.